welcome everybody to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Suratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Suratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. We're going to have a really great episode today because we're going to get into the topic of astral travel, the sleep time, dream time, and uh, questions about like, where do we go when we astral travel? How do we utilize our dream space to deepen our understanding of reality and and even receive messages and connect more with that part of us or the intuitive abilities? So this is an exciting episode. We're going to have a part two as well that's going to be focused a little bit more on kind of the darker themes of this. Unfortunately, sometimes you end up in, when you go astral travel, you might end up in darker realms and we're my gonna we're gonna talk about some of that as well as things like nightmares and sleep paralysis. And that's a really important topic because a lot of people suffer from these attacks. And whether they know it or not, whether they have those experiences consciously or not, they could be happening for people. And this is a very important topic as well. So that'll be part two. Stay tuned for that. All right, Bonnie, I'm excited for this topic. So let's just get straight into it. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. All right. Uh, so this actually was somewhat inspired by the Intuitive You program that is one of the programs that you offer and is taught currently by uh, the lead accelerator on your team. Her name is Sarah Ellingworth. And I just want to say that she's doing a fantastic job uh, with that class. And I'm in it right now and it's nearing the end. I don't want it to end. <laughs> and so module four, we actually talked about other dimensions and that was that was the week where we talked about other dimensions and we got into astral travel and dreams. So I do want to start with that. And, and also people, if you're interested in intuitive view, sign up for the newsletter, you'll get notified the next time it happens. It's incredible. And I highly recommend for everybody. Bonnie, when we sleep, are we actually astrally traveling? And so from my understanding, we have an astral body and this is the part of us that actually goes and travels. Could you tell us what really is the astral body and what is astral travel? Okay, so we have many bodies. We have the light body, a merca body, light body, etheric body. And what happens is with our astral body, think about it, we're on the astral planes. That means we're in time and space that is not right here on planet Earth in a sense. Like if you shift your awareness, you can begin to feel and sense the different layovers, the different dimensions and different uh, time and space, all of that. So the astral body has the ability to traverse all of the different time, space, dimensions, realms, okay? We're not limited to, to anything. We're not held in the earth plane, but we have that ability to be anywhere at any point in time. But also, just to make it really clear, uh, we're always held, the astral body is always connected. You know, there's like this silver cord that connects us so that the astral body can just go anywhere and, and that there's no disconnecting from the actual physical form. I mean, if the astral body actually disconnects, the body's probably going to die, of course. So with the astral, interact, going on the astral planes, again, it's, it's the ability to be anywhere in an instant, like for example, you know, we can we can we can be right here, Cynthia, and I can take my awareness and be on the other side of the world, okay, in an instant, like right now, right here, right now, boom, right there, okay. There's no lagging of the time doesn't stop it or make it like, oh, okay, we're gonna travel across the you know across the, the globe. Oh, we got to go hours and hours. No, everything is instant, like right here, right now. There's nothing that blocks or stops just that astral consciousness, the astral body that can be anywhere at any moment. Okay. And everyone has this, everyone has an astral body and the astral body, again, it just depends on what's happening in one's world, one's life. And what's really cool is this is also a time when we, we connect with our, other soul families. Like for example, you and I could be meeting up on the astral planes 
deciding different things that, that, that you'll have like an impetus or a desire or a feeling or a sense, you know, to talk about something or even like with a podcast, you might have an idea that came because of, you know, maybe communicating, talking about whatever, you know, like talking about, okay, let's do this or what, you know, that type of thing. And we meet up with a lot of our soul family. There's lots of different things that we actually are doing when we're going up in, you know, into uh, the sleep, when we're sleeping, that we're going up into the astral realms and connecting, you know, sometimes we're meeting old, old, like way back. Sometimes we might be going into past life experiences. I mean, it's just unlimited what we might be doing when we're sleeping in our astral bodies, traversing, you know, you know, going out and exploring, reconnecting with loved ones that have passed. I mean, all kinds of things could be happening. Okay. And sometimes too, when we're troubled or bothered, we got anxiety, there's something happening that we're troubled by. Oft, sometimes the ast- you know, this aspect of us can go and start checking in or connecting or whatever needs to happen. And then somehow we just find ourselves relaxing in the, like the, some of that intense feeling, we might wake up feeling, whoa, I just feel like peace. I know I feel like something's somehow resolved. Okay. Even though we don't have any awareness of what our astral body is doing, it can still be doing things to help and support whatever journeys and experiences that we are on or having right here in our lives in this moment. So that aspect of us, I mean, it's like it it regularly, every night we're doing something, you know, we're out doing something, we're exploring, reconnecting, whatever. Um, Sometimes we're preparing things and uh, for the future. Okay. So that part of us, I mean, it always has our back and and what always wants the best for us even though it might seem like, oh, my word, this is happening. And, you know, what's happening? And, and it'll feel like, okay, we're being punished or God's punishing us. That's not what's up. It's that sometimes, you know, in order to shift and become more liberated and to wake up, other things have to present and get, get you know, uh, resolved or felt or unraveled. And that's not always a fun experience. So, Again, the astral body is that part of us that every nightly and when we're sleeping, we're out exploring, we're doing things, reconnecting, all kinds of cool stuff. So, Bonnie, you did talk just now about how you you could shift your awareness Mm. um, instantly. And I know you could do that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. uh, And other other people, too, who who could just do that instantly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I do you want to ask about that a little bit and, and then we can move on more to the astral, uh, you know, but I really want to kind of ask about that part, which you mentioned mm-hmm. how you could shift your awareness and you could go in a different time space. So how is, when you do that, how is that different from astral travel? Because you're not using your astral body to go there, right? You're just, no. so what part of your awareness is actually being able to do that? And how is that separate from the astral body traveling? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Good question, Cynthia. Okay, so the the uh, it's the awareness, Cynthia. It's the awareness that we all are. All right. So the easiest way for people to understand this is when we are just you know hanging out, doing like even right now, Cynthia. So right, if I were to start just tuning into my own awareness, it's that place where I'm aware of my thoughts, I'm aware of the sounds, I'm aware of you. It's that place where we just have an awareness. It's not an emotional place. It's not um, anything. It's not a mind thought place. It's an it's the place of awareness. Okay. Here's the thing about awareness, which is really a friggin awesome. We are all the same awareness, Cynthia, the awareness that I am, the awareness that I have, is the same awareness that you are, that you have. It's in all sentient beings, critters, animals. We all have an awareness and that awareness, we don't need, we could be blind, we still have awareness, okay? So that awareness is the, is everything. When we think about awareness and everyone has awareness and creation itself is awareness, then in that awareness, that's why we can be anywhere in an instant 
my millimeter of a second, we, we can take our awareness and be anywhere. We're not taking our astral body. It's the awareness. So what's happening is in the awareness, we are aware of everything. All existence, creation itself is awareness of everything. Think about how vast the universe is. That's still all awareness. So when we come to here in these physical bodies, we have that awareness, which is the totality of everything, right? Happening simultaneously, all existence. With, with that, I can, I, can, I, can go, I can go on another time, space, dimension. I can go another, you know, another, go back in time. It doesn't matter. The awareness, there's no limits to awareness. It's everything all the time simultaneously and we are all that thank you for that bonnie so to go back specifically to the astral travel topic um i want to know and you did talk touch upon this too but i i want to know um what determines where we travel to astrally because i know that there's some people who they teach how to be conscious and do it consciously mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. from from the for those people it's this particular awareness that's directing the experience right but for a lot of people they don't have that kind of control mm -hmm. and so is it our higher levels or the higher aspects of our soul that's actually determining where we go and what what are the different factors that might determine like tonight if when i go to sleep where mm -hmm. am i going why why is that happening specifically mm -hmm. okay you know? so sometimes it's actually happening because of what's occurring in your life right now Okay, so sometimes people are going through really intense experiences. Um, they could be going through shifts and changes. I mean, there's just a lot that's, that's determining what's going to happen when you go to sleep. Okay, so and then other times too, you know, when, it, when your life is a little bit smoothed out or you're not in trauma or crisis, that type of thing, or troubled, okay, then, then the astral body has much more... Uh, different places and things that can be doing. But sometimes when we're having experiences that are affecting us, oftentimes our astral body is going to be going and um, connecting with other beings, connecting with other aspects of other people, uh, communicating, connecting, because um, everything's really about, uh, it's not really about resolving, it's more about being free. Okay, being free to be to be in that full expression of who we are and the astral body will work with other astral bodies okay it can also connect with our own higher levels which is different than the astral body see the astral body is connected to the physical body higher levels are not attached in any way they're you know they're a consciousness of, of us and those aspects of us which are more than one are, are constantly working and, and diligently connecting to bring us opportunities for our liberation, okay? So the astral body, uh, depending on what's happening, it's gonna be working to resolve, to find answers, to find solutions, or maybe there's other things happening, maybe you're under attack, or maybe, you know, by who knows what, Maybe there's enemies. I mean, there's always something happening that the astral body is dealing with, so to speak, and taking care of, and in a sense, trying to do its best to minimize our intense experiences, or our suffering, but also at the same time is trying to bring solutions or, or that, that type of thing. Sometimes where the astral body is just out meeting up with like, maybe you got your mom or dad has passed or you got children or whatever that are on the other side. Sometimes we're just connect, reconnecting at that level. Um, so, you know, it, it, it doesn't, there's no set rule to any of it. Okay. But what really does happen though, like I said, when we are in some kind of crisis, there is that part of us that's trying to find a way to bring us opportunities so that we can be freed from these intense experiences. Okay, so that's also helping and connecting with our knowing and giving us guidance. Uh, like just let's just say that the astral body is out, you know, because there's someone's having a major trauma crisis. They're terrified. They're worried for many different reasons, and so the astral body is going to be trying to find ways to bring a way of healing. 
Okay. But sometimes that way of healing may not feel like it's a healing. It may actually feel like we're getting whacked even more, but that's because people don't understand the teachings. Okay. They don't understand that, oh, this is really about going through the emotions in order to know thyself so that you don't have to keep calling these same kinds of experiences in. So sometimes it's like we, you know, we get whacked feeling like we're getting whacked when actually what's really happening is here's another opportunity. And if we can use it, then it's going to, it'll be, provide us an opportunity to truly unravel, to be liberated from a particular issue. So the astral body can also be connecting with, uh, let's just say you have a partner, maybe you're married or you got kids or whatever that, you know, if there's, if there's things going on with your kids and sometimes that astral body can also be connecting, you know, at that, that time, uh, sleep time with your family, your kids, your spouse, your mate, whatever. And, you know, the, the experience is not anything like of the physical form, of course. And there is that uh, connection that's happening at different levels for different reasons, depending on what's happening. Like, for example, let's just say someone has a child or not child, but a you know, young adult is going off to college and the mother or father is stressed out or worried or concerned, you know, so maybe they're connecting with the, the astral body of their kid during sleep time. And in some ways being more reassured that, all is well, or, you know, I mean, you know, when your kids go off to college, they're going to be exploring, they're going to be doing things that you can't control. So still, there's still that connection at a different, much higher level than what we are consciously aware of. Okay? So the astral body, you know, is working for us. It's like pulling things together, connecting, exploring, researching, all kinds of stuff that can be happening. And then too, we can be off into other time space. Sometimes we might even go back into past lives, okay? Or we might be going into their other dimensions, into other time and space where we have been in other incarnational experiences, you know, galactic beings or other, other worlds or, or dimensions, universes, galaxies, all of that. So we are unlimited. It's limitless of where we can be. And again, what's really cool is even with the astral body, okay, that part of us also has that awareness. So just like, you know, I was saying earlier that I can be anywhere in any, any moment, so can the astral body, okay? It's just that, boom, we're there, the, the desire, and boom, it's happening. We're there, reconnecting, whatever's needing to happen. So there's always that exploration. There's always a reason, purpose. Um, and then sometimes, too, it's just reconnecting just to be reconnecting without any purpose other than reconnecting or connecting with someone that we are bonded with or have a connection to. Bonnie, so sometimes when people have these astral experiences and they might have dreams that are actually, um, maybe they're literal, like people are seeing what they literally experience. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's just symbolic. So how does mm -hmm. that come in through our dreams? Can you talk about that? Sometimes there are things, you know, there, well, not sometimes, there are certain things that we're going to experience, like the word has already been spoken, okay? And sometimes too, it's a, a preparation, you know, getting ready for something. And other, and other times too, like there's, so, there's something that's going to be happening that is going to be big, you know, like you're saying, like that, that, that knowing, that intuition that something's presenting, something's coming down the pike, okay? You might have a nervousness or an anxiety or a worry, or you can just feel something's coming, okay? So um, even, even things like, um, like deja vu, you know, we have that deja vu thing, you know, they're trying to explain it in different ways, but sometimes what's really happening is we're just knowing the, the, uh, the future, so to speak, so we can we're in that moment. But the thing is, is I've had experiences as kind of a trip where I'm having one of those deja vu things and I'm, and I'm aware of it. I'm going, okay, I, I remember this. And if this is what's going to happen, this is going to be said, and then it would all do that. So it was a deja vu of something that uh, actually happened somewhere else, another time space. And here it was coming through. And then we were having that feeling or sense of deja vu. Okay. Um, and the, the um, coming back to our looking into the future or things coming down the pike or things of that nature, 
sometimes the astral body is preparing for that. You know what I mean? Exploring that, like what's coming. Like, for example, if we're feeling like, ooh, I feel like something big's going to happen. I feel like there's something. I don't know what it is. So the astral body, when we're sleeping, can actually move, go towards the energy, the frequency that's going to be presenting and having a sense of or a knowing of what that is. And then what happens for us is pretty soon, whoa, I get it. That's what's coming. There's going to be a, a hurricane or whatever. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be some kind of accident. Something's coming. So that's like that future thing looking into what's coming coming to us again for me I just I just use the term the word has already been spoken that means there are certain things that you are going to experience that are going to happen in your life okay so when the astral body is actually discovering and understanding what those things are what it also does is even though our conscious mind doesn't know or doesn't understand there's still something that begins to happen because the astral body saw it, witnessed it, understands it, knows it's coming. And because we are connected to that part of ourselves, then oftentimes what can happen is we either get more nervous, more anxious because holy cow, there's something that's coming, something big. Okay. Or there's something that just has a relaxation and an acceptance that something big is going to come. Something big is going to shift and change. Okay. And it could be anything. It could be global. It could be personal. It doesn't, you know, something. So, it, you know, we're all plugged in in some way. And there can, like I said, there can just be that calming effect or, you know, more like, okay, I can, yeah, I feel it. But now I'm not so triggered. I'm not so upset. I'm not so worried or feeling anxious. And, and then other times it can get even more intense. You know what I mean? Like, holy cow. I'm like, wow, I can just really feel it. And I just can't get a grip, you know? because there's just that knowing that something big's coming. So it sounds like to me that, you know, obviously what you're describing is our astral body is really, really helping us uh, when we're sleeping. And so for people who they want to become more conscious and explore in that way, do you think that's actually on some level kind of a bad thing to do? Because then this consciousness is kind of directing things rather than the part of us that maybe knows better. Um, and but I'm sure it's different for everybody, like people mm -hmm. who maybe are way more aware, they could be more conscious in that state and use it for for their benefit in a really good way. Right. Um, and maybe other people, they they aren't able to do that. I, I'm mm -hmm. kind of curious about that, because it sounds like to me, like I should just leave that alone. I shouldn't even mm -hmm. go try mm -hmm. to direct things because there's mm -hmm. a greater part of me that knows more that's trying to help me. And so could you maybe right, talk about right. that? Because I know. Some people yeah. may want to utilize this time to really right. for their benefit. And it could, right. it could definitely be, but maybe there's some, it, it maybe depends. It's like, yeah. you know, it depends on the person. So can you talk right. about that then? Yes, 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 yes. So, you know, here's the thing. Again, the word has already been spoken. Okay. So people who are interested that want to explore, that really want to have an awareness of their astral body and where it's going and what it's doing and trying to direct it and, and actually intentionally you trying to utilize that for their own well-being, for their own expand, whatever, you know what I mean? Whatever those personal reasons are, if there's a desire to explore that arena, okay? But it's no different than any other thing that people want to explore, okay? But here's the thing, which I think is really kind of cool, is that because the word has already been spoken, you're already going to move, those that are seeking, those that are wanting to explore and really wanting to tap in and utilize all of that, that's already part of the divine plan in your unfolding, the, the divine plan for you personally. So there is that exploration, but it's already determined that you were going to be following that thread or looking into that, that awareness and looking into look exploring the astral body and what it does. Okay. And of course, no matter what happens. So even though there are some people who are interested in it, wanting to explore and no matter what they do, they just can't seem to work it. You know, where other people, they have that intention, they start working it and they really truly feel like they are connecting and they are directing and orchestrating even more. And that's an empowering uh, experience for them. Again, the word has already been spoken. So 
you're, you, you know, you're going to have these experiences or you're not going to have them. And there's something in both ways. So those who don't have the experience, even though they're trying, 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 it's going to hit different places in their subconscious. It's going to activate core wounding. I'm serious. Okay. It's going to activate the, the places within that may feel like, oh man, you know, I just, no matter what I do, I can't, whatever. And but it's activating, okay? So it's really about the soul evolving. And no, no matter what, uh, you know, matter what the journey looks like, it's always the same. It's always about for the person's liberation, okay? So for those that are really working it and they're having great experiences, that's going to hit something different inside of them. There's going to hit, make, create them even more confident, even feeling more, and in, in, you know, uh, insured about themselves and feeling potent and powerful, but then that's part of that soul's journey is to have that experience. Those that are having, struggling, trying, trying, wanting, wanting to have this experience, it's going to hit something deeper inside. So ultimately, Cynthia, everything that's happening is about us. It's about our own liberation. It's about us being able to share the gift of who we are at all times without hiding who we are, being afraid, you know, without capitulation. It's always about that heart being open and just being that who, truth of who you are. And everything that's happening is leading us down that same path. The, the, uh, the part that's unfortunate is that most people, in fact, mo most everyone, do not have the higher level teachers, teachings so they don't know these components. So then they become, they feel like victimized. Okay. But ultimately everything really is about that. Everything. Okay. So Bonnie, I know that a lot of people want to explore these other realms and they want to do things like astro travel, or even I, I think on a, another related note is they want to use their dreams specifically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I know for me, like I've had these types of experiences before where I've, I've had astral experiences and I've had very intense dreams that were very spiritual. Like mm -hmm. some of them were very like, some of them were like high level positive experiences. Mm -hmm. Actually my, my first angel experience, Bonnie was in a dream uh, mm -hmm. with Archangel Metatron came in and wow and that was a really powerful experience for me because that was when I started to wake up wake up and be on the spiritual journey I, I think I've told you before I used to be atheist right yeah and yeah. then I had you know I don't want to get into all of that but once I kind of had that revelation I had uh, then I started having a lot of different experiences and uh -huh. some of well many of them were very dark Mm -hmm. And we'll get into some of that in the next episode. So if people really want to uh, tune, you know, tune in for that, stay tuned for that, because that's going to be a really powerful episode. And I'm going to share my experiences of things like sleep paralysis, being attacked by mm -hmm. you know, demonic entities mm -hmm. um, and negative ETs, shadow people. I, I have all those stories. <laughs> right. So stay yeah, tuned yeah. for that episode and make sure you subscribe. Um, so people have a lot of these different like spiritual experiences, some very positive, some negative, and mm -hmm. this can be somewhat of a bridge for them to maybe do astral travel later if they wanted to, or even to awaken their intuitive abilities and their psychic abilities. I feel like it's a great time to kind of, or a great way to deepen their understanding of these different dimensional spaces and really they're deep in their understanding of reality if you think mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and, and if that was the case mm -hmm. for me was dreams were such a big part of me awakening to this path. And, right. you yes. know, for me to understand on a deeper level, where, what, what life is, what reality is. And mm -hmm. so my question is, Bonnie, for those who are maybe on the same, where maybe for people who they are also getting a lot of dreams and maybe that's their way of kind of bridging the gap between this physical world and, and opening up to these different realms and to intuitive abilities. What kind of advice would you give them to kind of maybe use this time, their sleep time or their dreams to mm -hmm, maybe mm -hmm. receive messages, maybe like you said, mm -hmm. precognitive dreams. Right, like right. I had so many precognitive dreams that helped mm -hmm. me and, mm -hmm. and I received a lot of messages through my dream right. time. 
Right. So what kind of advice would you give for dreams specifically, not astral <laughs> stuff? Yeah, for the dreams. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I just want to say something too about you have been seeking. Okay. Not everybody is seeking. You know, some people are just asleep and want to stay asleep, but nothing in them wants to awaken to who we really are, their spirituality. Okay. So because like someone like yourself, even myself, and most people that are would be here watching us, it's really about that desire to end their suffering. I mean, really, is that what for you, that's why you did everything you did was to end your suffering. It's that desire to end our suffering is when things really start kicking in. Okay, that's when we can start looking at our dreams and and being open to direct guidance or, the, you know, cognitive or whatever, just having guidance, okay? And that's actually what happened for you. And I do want to say this, everyone is a soul evolving and everyone is at a different stage in their evolution, okay? So when I look at you, clearly I can see since hear, no taste, smell, that you've been on a spiritual journey, spiritual quest, most of your life, as well as past lives, okay? Not everybody has that same experience. So for people that want to, you know, like they, there's something in them, they're called, they just want help, they're seeking uh, to basically be liberated. They may not know that's what they're seeking, but that is what it is, they're seeking liberation. And by utilizing our dreams, because the dreams are showing us different things that can come in, in, in parables or, or, or different things that we have to unravel and understand because it's not going to be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go to my dream state and oh, it's going to tell me directly, oh, okay, you need to do this because this is happening. It doesn't work that way, okay? It's always in some kind of a visual thing where you are the one who have to interpret it or, or you're having like some kind of spiritual awakening kind of like what your journey was like to where you're being given or seen or, or, you know, just having these, these experiences that are helping to shift and change you. So the dreams, when people are truly interested, they want, they want, why do people want to know their dreams? Okay. Really? Isn't it about, I want to know and I want to understand. I want to make my life better. Okay. And so when we have that desire, that intention, then different things are going to happen for us. It may not even, it may come in a different way than even our dream state, but for some, it's going to come through with a lot of uh, experience, like you said, lucid dreaming or remembering the dream, or you had a major dream and it's like, whoa, it really impacted you, like really impacted you. And I mean, I have lots of people that had major things that shifted and transformed their lives drastically. So, when we want to do that, when we have that intent, that desire to use our dreams to help with our own un unraveling, understanding, development, expansion, okay, then we intentionally go to bed at night. Sometimes people will put like a pad of paper because often, as you know, if you're not having a lucid dream, sometimes we forget, even though we have these amazing expanded experiences when we wake up, we knew we, when you're starting to wake up, you're knowing it and you want to hold on to it, but it just like slips away. Okay. So sometimes when we're, you know, at night, when we are sleeping, if we have a, like a little, like a pad of paper right there, because some, because in that dream state, we actually have that ability and awareness to write it, write something down. Even if it's just a few words that helps us to remember, Oh yeah, I remember that. Okay. So then what that does is it allows us to, to read what we wrote and then it helps us to recall. Another thing too, is when we first start waking up, like we feel our consciousness starting to come back, we feel it, there's that slight awareness. That would also be the time to write down or you know, make, make, take note of what we're still remembering because oftentimes that's the time we're still having a, re a memory of whatever dreams we were having. So it's that intention, you know, like that desire, that intention to use our dreams to help us understand, to help us to wake up, to help us to, you know, maybe discover what we're, what's still in our subconscious that's affecting us negative, negatively. So 
you know, the dreaming, the dream realms are, I mean, it's always showing us things. There's so much happening. I mean, can you imagine the first sleeping even six hours, at least, you know, maybe four or five hours of that we're doing things. Okay. But our dream might be just a few seconds or a few minutes, but then there was all these other things happening that we're not remembering. So sometimes for some people, not everyone, but for some people, they're, they're, they begin to track their dreams and they begin to really study their dreams with that desire to know themselves even more. And with that, then they can, they will take steps. They will literally do what I was saying, or, you st- or even recording it. Sometimes we might even have a, like a little recorder. Nowadays we have our phones and you can have it all set up. So even though you're in your dream state, there's an awareness of record. <laughs> <laughs> so something in us grabs the record and we hit it and we talk it, but we're still asleep. You know, we're still in that kind of an altered state, but at least we're getting, you know, we're talking. And sometimes that can really bring memory back of what we were experiencing. Because when you, when you have to talk, do a writing thing, you're having to pull yourself out of where you are. But when you just record you're still there. And all you're doing is just kind of like speaking whatever you're experiencing. And that can be profound. Okay. So, you know, it's just, a, it's that intention, Cynthia, it's that desire and people who are called to that, 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 you know, that it speaks to them, that will be an avenue for them. Like, you know, remember this, okay. All paths lead home. doesn't matter which path you take. They're all leading home. So this is another path for some people. And, you know, it just depends on your know your past incarnations and whatever's so what you know, and so that can be a very awesome way to, you know, to to keep waking up to help end your suffering to get liberated is to use those dreams to because they're speaking to us they're showing us there's so many things that are presenting in the dream time that we just don't remember and and we and as we here's the good news. As we keep, like if you're committed, like if you're really committed and persevere, pretty soon it'll get easier and easier and easier for you to pull forth your dreams. Like when you start waking up, you're going to start remembering them in a different way than if someone who's, you know, not not interested or not bothering, you know, whatever. And you're going to be able to start working with the dreams even more because this is the, the path. This is the venue that you are using for your own awakening, for your own liberation. Bonnie, it's really cool that you talk about that because uh, like I shared about my journey and early on when I first awakened, I had all these dreams and I got to the point where I would even try to use crystals to enhance the dreams. I think Mm -hmm. uh, there are certain Mm -hmm. crystals and then even herbs that would make things a little bit easier to recall. I mm-hmm. even had a dream journal and I would ask questions mm-hmm. and I would always mm-hmm. kind of have a ritual where I set an intention. I want to remember my dreams, right. et cetera, et cetera. And then I got so good at that um, and exploring that. I actually was getting, I say on average, three dreams a night that I could remember without mm-hmm. even writing them down, you know, right. like yeah. that's how, <laughs> that's how right. good I got at, at the recall. Yep. And over time, I felt like I was evolving in my spiritual journey so much mm-hmm. that I don't really use my dreams at all anymore. They, mm-hmm. they just, mm-hmm. It's yeah. just something that happens here and there right. where I'll have a, a dream that I maybe I need to know about. Mm-hmm. But now when I want to connect and get uh, messages or, or just, you know, want to connect with that, I, it's mostly through meditation. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not like I wasn't doing that before, but it's just much more, it, it just shifted. And, right. And so I, I feel like it, once I've progressed and I became, I guess, maybe stronger in my. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma- it's like mastered it. You you sort of mastered it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so now I moved on and I'm trying and to receive on. things in a different way that on some level right. is actually a lot more precise because the dreams, they were so metaphorical. Mm-hmm. It was right. It yeah. ended up being like a maze. <laughs> in some yeah, ways. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. now I could be a little more conscious with that connection and trying to receive more precise answers mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and yeah. also use yeah. less of my time because 
Right. I was spending so much time journaling and yeah, yeah, <laughs> analyzing. Yeah. yeah. But at the same yeah. time, it really, see, that was your path. That's what, that's how you got where you are. Okay. Even though, even though ultimately you're not using it like you did, it opened the gateways. It opened all kinds of things that would not have been open for you. And it's brought you to where you are right now. So again, even though you're not utilizing it like you once did, that became your path. Okay? You got really involved in it. And this is what happens for people. They do. They set their intentions. Sometimes people go, okay, I'm going to go, you know, and they write down what they want, they, all of that. And then that deep intention of having the journal and also the desire and really, really doing it almost every single night and morning. Okay. So for some people, this is their way. This is the path for them to heal, to discover, to, to understand, you know, to evolve. So yeah, it's an awesome path. I mean, everyone's got their own, you know, some people are into the dream, some people are into meditation, whatever, everyone's got their own way. The seekers have find their way what works for them. Okay. And that's what interested you. Same thing with everybody. Not everybody's interested in tracking their dreams. Okay. But those that are, they're going to do like you did, and they're going to get really involved in it. And they're going to have amazing experiences. It's pretty awesome. All right. So we're near the end of the episode, this part one of the series on dreams and the sleep time and dream time. So I do have a fun question to end this particular episode, Bonnie. And it's about the three most common dreams that people have. And uh, I want to know, <laughs> I want to know what do they mean? Why do pretty much everybody have them and have you had them before? So let me start with number okay. one, mm -hmm. being nude in public. All right. <laughs> number, <laughs> number two, yeah. yeah, yeah. being chased. Oh, yeah. And three falling dreams. So do you yep. want to talk about all those? The first, have you had these dreams? Bonnie? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So the nude one, it's that exposed. It's, it's hitting our subconscious. Okay. It's like. We all, everybody, not everybody, at some point, everybody has a fear of being exposed, of, you know, of being to where there's nothing that you can't hide. And it creates a lot of, a lot of intense energy. You know what I mean? Like for some people, oh my God, it was like mortified that I'm naked, you know, and everybody's seeing me. Okay. It's hitting that place where, you know, every, on some level, everybody wants to be seen and recognized for who they are, but also there's a terror of people really seeing us, seeing who we really are. So it hits that subconscious plate. It's all the subconscious, okay? So it comes out as, wow, being exposed, I'm nude, I'm naked in front of everybody. Everybody can see me. And it's like, you know, for some people, it's a horror. <laughs> and other people are like, all righty then. <laughs> you know, it's just, we all do it different, okay? And then the chased one, oh, man, that, that gets so freaking intense, doesn't it? Really? Oh, my God. Many chase, getting chased, getting chased. So what that is, it's like, think about this. When you're being chased, what's it activating? Terror, <laughs> fear, okay? So we're running for our lives. And how about those things where you're going as fast as you can and you're not getting very far, you're like stuck in mud or whatever. And it's like, you just, you know, it's just like all this intense emotion and terror and fear. So it's, what it's doing is it's, it's bringing to the surface those feelings of terror and fear, okay, the terror, the fear, um, uh, uh, you know, and, and being chased by something that we don't know, okay, because they're on some level in our subconscious, there are things that we don't know that are hidden. And they're bothering us, there's something, something's being activated that we have that we feel we don't have control over. And uh, it can be that feeling of, you know, like, that the, the terror of the unknown and the, the, the intense feelings that come up. But again, it's still always about the unconscious. What's trying to present? What's trying to be shown here? What, what's, what's it trying to tell me? Okay. So what we can do, though, is when we get those chasing dreams, because they get, they're terrifying, you know, they're troubling. And when we wake up, we're still traumatized by that feeling of being chased. And if we can work in a different way by recognizing, okay, yeah, 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 that terrified me. 
but there's something here for me. Something's trying to, to be exposed. Something's trying to present. So can I just think about that dream and what got activated in me and let that feeling just come start to move forth? What will happen is that all that energy will come up and out of the body because it's like there's traumas inside of everybody. There's carryover from past lives. Things get activated and you're trying to release them. And that can be one of the things of feeling chased uh, that will, that that's bringing this to the surface. So it's another opportunity in some way to unravel more from the subconscious. Okay. And then the falling one, <laughs> isn't that the trippiest thing falling? And I, I, I mean, I just, even as a kid, I would have those, but it's like, it's an out of control feeling. Okay. So when you're falling, think about it when there's nothing you can do, right? There, even when you're falling, even in the dream, you can't stop it. You can't, you know, you mean you have no control. So, um, you know, some of the things that are happening is that falling is just showing you where, you know, you're trying to be in control of something in your life, in your world. And the truth is, is you have no control over anybody else. You don't even have control over your, in your, your own life, so to speak. And so that feeling, that free falling, that falling, it does when you, when you feel into that feeling and you're falling, if you really feel into it, you're really going to feel that sense of totally out of control, panic, terror, nothing you can do. You can't stop it, you know, and it's like the horror and it feels like you're going to die for real, as you all know. So, I mean, it's, it, there's other components as well, but that's probably the most, most main piece is you're freaking out of control. Okay. And you want to be in control. So these falling dreams really show you you're not in control. And what's it feel like to be out of control? Because if you can surrender to being out of control, something big sh will shift inside of you. It's like, oh, you know, pretty soon it's like, whoa, all right. I'm not going to change the world. I'm not going to save the world. I'm not, I can't make somebody else do or believe or think differently. I can't control. And when we live, when we grow up in families where people are out of control, like almost every family is out of freaking control, okay, on some level, the children are in that chaotic energy, and there's just it's this feeling desire. Somebody do something. Somebody stop this. Somebody change this. And there's no way to to do that because people are out of control. So, you know, all that feeling, all that emotional angst and and, and emotional wounding is getting activated during dream state, showing us we are at, we're totally out of control, okay? So, you know, the, the falling, the free fall, when you think about it, look at it, what, what do you, you know, what's happening? You, you know, you can't stop it. You can't change it. It's like a terror. So again, a lot of these dreams are, at, you know, hitting these really deep subconscious places within that we really want to bring to the surface and this is one of the ways it happens. It just brings it to the surface. But most of us aren't aware of that. So when it happens, it's like, whoa, that was so horrible. Oh, my God, I thought I was going to die. And it was so intense. But we need to take it to the next level, the next step. Okay. But it's showing me something here. So, hmm, let me just let me drop in and really feel into that feeling of falling. And, and what does that, how'd that make me feel? What are the emotions? that I need to know so I can release and, and transform in this experience. So it's pretty cool. Thank you so much, Bonnie. This was an incredible episode. And there is a part two where we're gonna go deeper into some of the things that we talked about today. We're gonna go talk about nightmares. And well, we actually did talk a little bit about nightmares, the falling and the <laughs> being chased and the nudity <laughs> in public. Those are actually nightmares. And for many people, they're actually recurring. They have right. it often. Yes. And right. I do want to talk about, in the next episode, I do want to talk about the recurring dreams I had. They were zombie dreams. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Some of these were chase dreams, but not, not most of them were not. And uh -huh. I think this is a very interesting story because I had two very specific zombie dreams and they told me different things and they represented different things for me. And you were the one, Bonnie, who told me what was causing it like mm. what was really causing it because mm -hmm. i was working on getting rid of the zombie dreams for years because i've had right. these zombie dreams for like 20 plus years mm -hmm. yep. on average once a week it was intense mm -hmm. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And you were able to just like, not even, I don't even know. It, well, how long did it take you to do five seconds? It took you like maybe like five <laughs> seconds to tell me exactly what the reason was. Yeah. And then when I took that advice, now I don't have zombie dreams anymore. So it, uh-huh. that's, I definitely uh-huh. want people to tune in for that one, because if you're having nightmares, if you're having uh-huh. sleep paralysis, if you, uh-huh. you definitely want to be tuning into the next episode. So definitely subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, you definitely want to subscribe. And um, so you could be notified of that episode and all of our future episodes of Consciousness Unleashed podcast, as well as all the other YouTube videos we put out there. And so um, mm-hmm. this is going to be a, a great episode. Thank you once again, Bonnie, for this. I mean, this was one of my favorite ones, I'd say. Mm-hmm. It was we were really deep into some really incredible topics today. Mm-hmm. And um, thank you, everybody, for watching. If you're on YouTube, like this video, subscribe comment below let us know what you think and if you're listening to this on apple please leave us a review for consciousness unleashed podcast and check us out at spiritualacceleration.com we are making some changes we're actually going to have uh like really cool things happening for halloween so you definitely want to be on our newsletter and so sign up the link is below to sign up for a newsletter and thank you once again everybody thank you bonnie Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cynthia.